When I came in this morning, I couldn't help but notice that the three kings appear to be delayed in their arrival. <laughs> Maybe their flight was canceled like so many others. We come to celebrate here Epiphany, the arrival of the Magi, the so-called three kings, to come to Bethlehem and to give homage, to worship the newborn king of the Jews. And in that, in that action, manifesting to the world that indeed the Christ had come. That's the point of this whole thing, right? That these three guys from God knows where, right, are seeking out the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Christ, and they find the Messiah in this baby born in Bethlehem. And revealing that to the world, not just to the people of the Jews, but to all the world. And of course, that's what we celebrate today, this manifestation of the coming of God in the incarnation. And indeed, that's what the word epiphany means. An epiphany is a, is a revelation, a manifestation. And again, that's why we're here today. In the gospel story, which Again, is like so many of the stories of the nativity can get kind of sugar-coated almost, made kind of beautiful in a, in, in, a, in a kitschy sense, not in the deep meaning sense, but in the, in the saccharine bit of a sense, that we often lose sight of the reality of it all. And today is no exception, right? Here we have... God incarnated, coming into the world as the Messiah, as God with us, Emmanuel, revealed to the world as such. And we see two main characters, well, sort of a group and a person, and their relationship to that manifestation. What is their response? Right? So we have the Magi. They respond to this in a certain way. But we also have King Herod, who also responds in a certain way. Needless to say, the, the, the model held before us, and the one that we follow, indeed why we're here today, is that of the Magi. They come to worship, they come to do homage to the newborn king, right? And what do they do, practically? They present their gifts. They bring their treasures. And it's an interesting selection, right? And indeed, if little baby Jesus could have chosen what he wanted for his birthday, I don't think any of these things would have made the list, right? but they are all powerfully meaningful, right? And we all know what they are. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now there's a number of ways to interpret that. One is to, to, to realize that in this manifestation of God with us, we see the fulfillment of God coming into the world in three roles, if, as it were. As priest, prophet, and king. Right? Jesus is the eternal high priest, and hence the gift of frankincense, of incense. Right? That's what incense was, incense was for in that time, to offer to God as, a, as an act of sacrifice, as an act of worship, as an act of offering. Indeed, as we will celebrate in not too many months, right? we see that the Christ came to offer himself, right? To offer himself on the cross for us. Christ is the eternal high priest. Christ is also a great prophet. Indeed, the last prophet, you might say, right? He speaks the truth of God. He speaks God's word. Indeed, he is the word of God himself. That's one of the ways, that, one of the images that we use to even talk about Christ. 
Christ is the Word made flesh. He is a prophet. Again, not a fortune teller, but one who speaks the truth. And hence, the gift of myrrh. What was myrrh used for? It was used to bury people. It was a preparation for burial. What happens to many of the prophets? They were all killed. Many were killed. Many offered themselves. To be a prophet is to give oneself a, 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 totally to God. Hence, myrrh. And, of course, and this is the, this is the one that kind of made, uh, set off King Herod, is that Christ is the king. Right? We celebrate that each final Sunday of the year. Christ, the king of the universe, now we call it. Christ as king, and hence the gift of gold, gold given, offered to a king. And indeed, Christ is the king of the whole universe. Christ is the head of the universe, if you will, as St. Paul would say. Hence the meaning of these gifts. And the Magi offer them from themselves to God, right? As a sign of their giving themselves, if you will, through those gifts. And indeed, as it should be, because when we are baptized, we are also baptized as priest, prophet, and king. We share in those dimensions of who the Christ is. Right? We are priests. We offer ourselves in service to God. We hope we live a prophetic life through our words, but more importantly, by the way we live. Right? And we share in the kingship of Christ. But a king who doesn't come to have power over others, but to serve. It's that king, went, king thing that set off Herod. And that's the other response. Right? Herod hears right, that the king of the Jews is here. Now, why is this a problem for Herod? Because he was the king of the Jews. Right? He's got a letter from the Romans saying such. He wasn't elected, he was appointed. He was a political person. And as the political leader of that place, he had power. And the last thing a person of power wants is somebody to take it away. Right? And Herod was really good at protecting his power. Some early historian said that it was better to be Herod's pig than his son because he killed a good part of his family to protect himself, to protect his power. We know what happens after this story of the Epiphany. We all know what happens. And again, that's part of a desacralization of this whole nativity celebration, right? What does Herod do? He kills all the boys two years and younger. According to one early Jewish historian, this even included one of Herod's sons. He killed one of his own sons. You don't get much more ruthless than that. Hence, it was better to be Herod's pig than his son. Now, we're presented with these two responses to the coming of the Messiah. The, the response of the Magi, the response of Herod. Now, indeed, you wouldn't be here today if you thought Herod made the right choice, right? You wouldn't be here today, as it should be, right? But the reality is, again, we're not like Herod, but we need to be, Herod is a cautionary word to all of us, because what is our response to the coming of God in our lives? Hopefully it is in giving of ourselves to God. Whatever that means in whatever moment we find ourselves. On the other hand, sometimes we don't. Right? Sometimes we sort of try to kill that presence of God in our lives. 
I don't mean that in a violent sense. It might not even be conscience, right? But there are moments in our lives when we say, God, don't go there. I want power over my life in this way. Don't mess it up. Get out. We all do that. In that sense, we're all, some of us at times are more like Herod than the Magi. Some, again, a word of caution to all of us. As we leave this, prepare to leave this Christmas season, we still got one more week to go. Keep wishing your family and friends and all you meet Merry Christmas for another week. For some of them, it'll make them really aggravated. So it's even better, right? Especially those, was that your last week? I don't remember anymore. Especially those people that already put their Christmas tree out on the, out on the, out on the stoop, right? There's a good Baltimore word, stoop. So we're presented, every moment of our lives, we're presented with this choice. Who are we going to be, the Magi or Herod? Hopefully we're the Magi, and hopefully we follow their good example. The text today re-ends with, they departed for their country by another way. The, king of, the way of King Herod is the way of the world. As Bonaventure said, the shipwreck of the world. This world is going down. It has no future on its own. But we are gathered here in the lifeboat of the church. Right? Hopefully we follow the Magi's good example. Hopefully we seek to find our way to life by another way. Not the way of the world, but the way of the Christ child.